And now it is time for our rants and raves, starting with you, Dan. Okay, I have a rave for a uh, Norwegian tech website named NRK Beta, which is part of the Norwegian public broadcasting system. Uh, I learned about this from the Neiman Journalism Lab that Josh <laughs> edits. Uh, they have a wonderful new approach to dealing with comments. Oh, uh, I love what, it. what they're doing is before you can post a comment, you have to answer a short quiz proving that you read the story. Oh. And, you know, you might say, well, who would comment without yeah. first reading the story? Most people. There, yes. Yeah, there was a study done last year that showed that 59% yeah. of links shared on social media, no one ever clicks on yeah. the Well, link. even people who email and they call to complain about something, yeah, exactly. you, you, you drill yeah. down and they never saw it. Well, my friend told me that you said. I go, yeah, 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 so this is, I mean, I think this is a yeah. potentially it's a great, great step I love it. Forward. Take a quiz. <laughs> and of course, the Norwegians are more polite anyway. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what kind of bad comments yeah. do they have? <laughs> yeah. All right, Callie. Um, uh, so this happened a few weeks ago and the guy's been working. I have a rave for Stephen Pearl. Berg. He used to work at the Wall, uh, Wall Street Journal, and now he's been hired by BuzzFeed to exclusively cover the relationship between Trump and the media. So, you know, we've been talking about this in various forms. Certainly reporters at all of these major uh, institutions, uh, news institutions, are having to do some of that. But this is his whole job, yeah. is just to look at the relationship. So he's done a few things. He's looked at uh, Breitbart's uh, CEO lobbying for congressional press passes. That was an interesting story. Um, he talked about reporters um, uh, uh, blocked from Sean Hannity's oh, yeah. CPAC thing. I thought that was interesting. And the fact that Trump gets anonymity after dissing anonymous sources and how he defined himself anonymously. So to be in, in certain uh, stories, even though he complained about anonymous sources. So it's very interesting, mm -hmm. and I think it'll be a good reference point for all of us as we go through. We'll see. Uh, yeah, you know, sounds good. And I like it. Yeah. All right. Susie, what do you got? So I have a rave for an extraordinary piece by a journalist from Mother Jones, Shane Bauer, who spent four months as a private prison guard and um, did this really remarkable piece. And what's really interesting about it is that he applied for the job, <clears throat> listing his job as journalist <laughs> and with his real name and his real social security number. And he really was able to expose a lot of yeah, I read that um, mismanagement. I mean, it was just a really fantastic piece. Everyone should read it. And last night it won the Goldsmith Award for Investigative Journalism. And we should all be celebrating investigative journalism. And someone should go out and read all five of the pieces. They were all extraordinary. I mean, it almost so. read like a novel. Yeah, yeah it, it was fantastic. It couldn't be it really true. Was. I mean, the, even the, the, the interview process for, for getting the job as a prison guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was, was amazing. Just, yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. Josh. At a time when the new administration is is reopening, uh, re-emphasizing private prisons. Yes, as and, as and considering oh, that was that was part of because it was a again. private prison. Yes, yeah, that's right. Louisiana. That's right. So yes. it was run. So they didn't have to go by any you know, rules other than their own. That was. But he wanted to see the different. By the way, he wrote a book also about. Um, he was in a prison in Iran for two years or just wrote, wrote it I down? I, that I'm not aware of, but I think the other thing that was interesting about this is that it was unique because it was a private prison, right? We've yeah, seen right. inside federal prisons yeah. before or government-run prisons. Private prisons are really secretive. They're extremely hard yeah. to penetrate, and that's why All this prisons was so extraordinary. Are secretive. Yeah. But yeah. This, these in particular, right? I mean, because Romney took away. We used to be able to take cam cameras yeah. into prisons. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. Not in this state. All right. Gosh. Uh, uh, quick note on the Warren Buffett thing. For a long time, he was the second largest investor in the Washington Post. I that's don't know if right. that's playing uh, into Maybe that's this. part of the issue. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but my my uh, rant rave, I guess, congratulations this, this week is about Snap, the company that, oh, that yeah. produces yeah. Snapchat. Uh, they had their IPO this yeah. week, and, and on the first day, the stock went up 44%. Today, it was up 10% earlier today. I don't know where it's, where it's going to close at. Uh, Snap is not a perfect company, and because I'm over the age of 27, I don't use Snapchat all that much. But I think it's very interesting that they are the closest thing to any, anyone has come along who could be a challenger to Facebook. Yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, because young people in particular have such a deep attachment yep. to, to Snapchat. They are, the, they are taking away mindshare that if you're worried as a news business about, about the dominance of Facebook, they are, they are someone to, to be watching for. I don't know how they could be losing $30 million a year and be worth $30 billion, but that's, that's a question. And they're, for technology they're projecting losses yeah. for years to come. I, it sounds I, like I a do great not investment understand to it. I would love to see how that works. So was that a rant or a rave? Yeah, that was yeah. a congratulations. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, well, I have a rave tonight for the podcast, oh. Missing Richard Simmons, the which is thing. the started best listening to thing it. Oh my God, since Serial, the first episode. Yeah. This is oh, riveting. Man. 
The host, uh, author, producer is a guy named Dan Tabersky. Um, he's really onto something here. Richard yes. Simmons, in, in case anybody didn't know, basically disappeared from public life two and a half years ago. Dan was at his gym, Slimmons. He had gone to the gym for about a year, and then one day Richard just disappears. He is trying to figure out what happened. Richard still, I drove by his house. I was in L.A. over the weekend. Still lives in L.A., is a total recluse, has said through other people that he's fine, that there's nothing wrong, but he creates quite a mystery here with what, it, what the possibilities here are and what might really be going on yeah. with him. So, and because of you, riveting. I listened to it, and I was Did like, you what? My God, the maiden and the muse. Uh, the yeah, maiden, the maiden that's the, the episode three. Yeah. Oh you got to got to do the first two okay. leading there up to that. There are only six episodes, so you got to oh. get in early. I have not gotten... Uh, yeah. Yeah, the fourth is from my timeline for years. It's, it's really interesting, Dan. <laughs> you would like it's it. It's worth it. Okay. All right. Yeah.